On this week's episode, we hop on an overnight boat into Milford Sound. We chat with Trey Ratcliffe about his philosophy of creating images. I find I like to meditate in the same places I take photos. And we photograph one of the most famous trees on the planet. This tree is, uh, there's a lot going on right now. We're gonna wait, we're gonna wait a minute. Milford Sound is a place I've always wanted to go. It is a fjord located on the South Island of New Zealand. It is unofficially known as the eighth wonder of the world, but I thought that was Kanye West. The drive takes about four hours from Queenstown and it is well worth it. Lots of great scenery along the way. These parrots are basically monkeys. They will steal everything that you have. They will steal your iPhone cables. They will steal your cameras. They will steal your Apple cores. There's really nothing more relaxing than being in a tunnel that's under construction that looks like it could collapse at any moment. But yay, we survived. Whoa. We're out here on the Milford Sound. It rains here over 200 days a year, and it just so happens that we got the most perfect day of all time. It's, uh, it's almost too hot for what I'm wearing. It's gonna be a fun day. I've never done just a single night cruise, but this one might be the best single night cruise of all time. Matt Damon's going to be upset he's not here. Let me tell you about my boat. It has a sprawling mess hall featuring many leather couches and a full library. A trained chef on board, spacious private quarters, as well as a rooftop hot tub for relaxation. Much luxury. Not sure what accent this is. It's too big to eat. Today I'm actually using the 16-35 f4 Nikon lens uh, because we are so close to everything. Uh, it makes sense. Usually I would be on a 7200 if I was photographing mountains like this, but uh, because we are so close to the mountains, uh, it makes sense to have this 16. So I'm very glad I brought it because I wasn't planning on it. I think there's gonna be a lot of good landscapes, especially as the sun starts to come down and really make a lot of kind of three dimensionality to these mountains. Never thought I'd be on a boat. Actually, yeah, I did. I booked it. Whenever we find ourselves in beautiful locations, we like to fly the drone. This was no ordinary and easy flight, unfortunately. You're welcome on the boat. Right. So that was potentially the most stressful drone flight in the history of my flight operations. Actually, a lot of things went wrong in that drone flight. The Mavic is really smart in the fact that it wants to hover exactly in one spot based on GPS signal. So it comes up, but as the boat moves, it flies into stuff. So I caught it. Finger is still numb from that propeller blade. The next thing that went really, really wrong was that I forgot to disable the collision control, um, the automated collision control that basically stops the Mavic from flying into things. Uh, it sees the boat as a thing that it wants to avoid. So it flies into the boat and then it just peels away and it stops. I didn't know how to disable the obstacle detection inside the controller really quickly because if I even pause and stop moving the drone for a second, it would just stop kind of in the air and our boat would continue moving and then I would have to catch up. What I had to do uh, that ended up actually working was going high enough and then coming down directly on us while also keeping pace with the boat. Uh, so the moral of the story is don't be stupid, don't fly a drone from a moving boat. Wait until you're parked in a beautiful place like this, uh, which we could have done, but uh, instead we tried to do it from a moving boat. I was more nervous that the drone would detect an obstacle and then try to fly to a person than I was that I was going to lose the drone. So maybe don't bring your drone on a boat. This is really nice. We just kind of float around, anchored for the evening. I wanted to set up a time lapse here, but I figure that this is kind of like a 360 restaurant style of thing. So the time lapse would probably be pretty nauseating. Ahoy! Wild dolphins! I'll stop using this accent now, sorry. There's really no contrast we're photographing dolphins in dark water. And when they come up, there's a little bit of spray that you can kind of focus on really quickly. 
but it's working really well. We have arrived in Wanaka, and it was a beautiful drive, and I might actually like this city uh, photographically better than Queenstown, uh, which is saying a lot, because I really, really love and enjoy the Queenstown area. We're here for one reason, and one reason only, or at least that's what brought us here, and it is this tree right here. It is uh, maybe the most famous tree in the world. It's called the Wanaka tree. We're gonna head down there for sunset. I imagine it's a popular spot, so there's probably gonna be a lot of other people around. This tree is, uh, there's a lot going on right now. A lot of kids, a dog. Nobody seems to really own the dog. The dog's just kind of uh, property of the beach. I do suspect that once the sunset officially happens, everyone's gonna leave. And it's just gonna be me. There's now a child climbing the tree. We're gonna wait, we're gonna wait a minute. We waited many minutes. Sorry, last last time. So it's just gotten really good, and as suspected, a lot of the photographers kind of pieced out. So right now we're shooting the 16 to 35, uh, trying to get the reflection off of the most famous tree in the world. And uh, I'm thinking that I like those photos, but I might want to go back up over here and maybe uh, get the tripod and some water so that I get some nice soft water in the foreground. Um, I think that'll make for a better image, but we'll see. So I'm still doing 15 second exposures at f4. The problem is you can't really isolate the tree against anything. So when you're wide, everything's just kind of in focus and really flat in the background, which I don't love. The colors look amazing though. What I wasn't expecting to happen was that the sun sets over here, so I thought that we were going to be basically in a silhouette type situation. But all the light is reflecting off the atmosphere over here, um, and it's making this weird, warm, rainbow softbox that's actually really cool. So that's probably the reason this tree works so well. We've been out here like an hour and a half, I'm thinking a lot about this tree. We made it back to the Wanaka tree and we are photographing with an Nikon 20mm f1.8, which is the lens I use usually when doing star photography. I find it incredibly sharp, wide open, and it's also wide so it gets lots of night sky in. Uh, the Milky Way is actually over here behind us, uh, which is not where the Wanaka tree is, unfortunately. However, behind the tree there are a lot of stars. It's a very clear night, especially over there. Uh, so we're hoping that maybe we'll see some movement of the Milky Way moving back over this way. Pretty much I'm just going to be doing a 15 second exposure at f1.8, uh, either 800 or 1000 ISO. It's on a Nikon D750 so uh, there won't be any grain or high ISO noise and we will be getting as many stars in this picture as possible. I was wondering what was going on with the lighting on this tree but it turns out the moon just kind of broke above the tree line over there. Which is both cool but also once it gets to a point in the sky it's just going to make everything look like it's daytime. Um, with stars out, which is a little confusing and it's not really the look I'm going for. So we're going to do as much as we possibly can in the next five minutes and then head back to the hotel. Let's see what Trey Ratcliffe has to say about creating. You know, we're here on Earth to create and share. Create and share, create and share. This is natural, this is what children do. Children create and share. And I think that's what we have to do as photographers is just create and you can notice stuff but don't let it bother you. So that's all for New Zealand. Pack your bags and a camera and book a flight. See the hobbits, swim Milford Sound, race down a mountain, contemplate by a tree and be humbled by the natural beauty New Zealand has to offer. It's really an incredible and amazing place in this world, and I 100% recommend that you come here at some point in your life.